Welcome to another episode of Hip Silver's Health and Wellness Series with me, Dr. Danya. We are here today with Rebecca Mayu, who is an expert in manual lymph drainage. If you don't know what that is, you are in good company. Rebecca is going to introduce us to our lymphatic system, how important it is, and what the technique of manual lymph drainage can do for us. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us today. Yes. Can you explain to us what the lymph system is from a big picture perspective? Big picture is the lymphatic system is the sewer system of the body. It is your immune system. It is a vast network of capillaries and vessels and lymph nodes and some organs like the spleen, the tonsils that are lymphatic in origin. And it is a massive filtering system that removes the cellular debris that can cause pain and degeneration in the body. And where does it go? The main drain for the lymphatics is either side of the neck and into the jugular junction. And then the lymph is filtered through the heart and kidneys and eliminated through urine, primarily. What is cellular debris? Cellular debris, great question, <laughs> would be, for example, if one has a bruise, then you've got broken vessels that have bled out into the tissue. That is an example of cellular debris. Ah, so the lymph will sort of pick that up on a microscopic level. Correct. And carry it away, and that's how bruises eventually go away. Correct. And lots of people think of lymph nodes. Yes. And lots of people think of them in their neck. But we have lymph nodes everywhere in our body, correct? correct. Yes. There are roughly 600 lymph nodes in the body. Everyone's a little different, but roughly 600. The system is responsible for filtering about two liters of lymph per day throughout the system. And as a container, the lymphatic system holds about seven liters of fluid. What do you mean when you say that the lymph system is one way? Oh, well, that's a great question. The vascular system, meaning veins and arteries, are two-way. It's a two-way highway, right? It's traveling out and then back to the heart. And the vascular system relies on the heart for pressure and circulation. The lymphatic system is a one-way circuit. It is separate from the heart and does not rely on the heart's pump. So it is more prone to becoming stagnant because it is separate from the heart. Okay, so it's one way, but it eventually dumps into the veins, which is part of the vascular system. Correct. Okay. If the lymph system does not need the heart to pump, what makes it move? Hmm. So the muscular contractions and like physical activity are really the prime mover of lymphatic fluid. Um, the lymph nodes that are strategically placed throughout the body do filter and move fluid through, but otherwise it's physical activity or manual stimulation. You are an expert in manual lymph drainage. Yes. Can you talk about your experience with that? Manual lymph drainage is taught and geared towards lymphedema, which is an abnormal accumulation of lymph fluid in the lymphatics. And that is often the byproduct of cancer treatment. And lymphatic drainage treatment was developed to manage folks who have lymphedema. And I have found in my near 30 years of practicing that there is far more application for lymphatic drainage and overall tissue health, immune health, and not just from a fluid management perspective alone. Gail Bruce, who is the founder of Hip Silver, had a recent hand injury. Yes. And we are going to go meet her hand therapist, and you're going to demonstrate this technique on her hand. Yes. Let's join them. Rebecca, welcome to Hands Up. I'm Toby, I'm one of the occupational therapists here. I have my team behind me, and we're looking forward to hearing all about your practice. So, tell me a little bit about what lymphatic drainage is. Lymphatic drainage is a circular pumping motion that mocks how the lymphatic system drains on its own. So what we do as therapists is we just speed up the amount of fluid that is moving through the tissue. So it can be come stagnant with 
injuries, lipedema, and there's many different ailments. So we just move that stagnation through the tissues. So how do most of your patients present on like a first visit? Do they come in with that big swollen limb? Do they have just a little minor swelling that needs some addressing? It typically is folks that have tried everything and have gotten no relief and they're frustrated and fed up and want to try drainage. Okay. So when you're working with scar tissue, can that come post-surgical? Does it have to be after surgery? Surgical, yes, but not always. It can be trauma from, yeah. you know, it could be a strain even. You know, a lot of times what I see is folks that have developed poor gait and habituation and movement that is the result of a fall, a car accident, whatever that might be, and then they end up twerking themselves into accommodate and move away from their pain. And I just find that more often than not, there's more issue with how we accommodate to that injury than the actual initial injury itself. Mm -hmm. in but really, lymphatic drainage is great for everyone because, again, we're practicing outside of the mindset of lymphedema and fluid management alone. I have a patient here that would definitely benefit from your services, I and I'd like it. to invite her up up here now. Okay. So with Gail, you see how dense her scar is here, especially when you try to extend the wrist. You can see the flexors are getting caught in the scar tissue. But what do we do here? Mm -hmm. How do we get this released? So that's where my approach to drainage is really different from how I was trained, and that one has to be a little more aggressive. We're not going to hurt her lymphatics because she doesn't have lymphedema, so you can go in mm -hmm. much more firm. And it's, it's just a circular pumping motion that we're literally mocking how the system flows on its own. And so what we do by releasing the scar tissue is really just getting in here and rehydrating the tissue. Mm -hmm. Is your superficial scar going to look the same? Yes. But you're not going to be bound in the keys underneath because we have brought fluid back into that tissue. Okay, so I'm essentially cross fiber and going with this with the scarring itself and just diving right into the fascia and just trying to release some of that scar. Now I feel that. We're not done, but give a feel. So yeah, you can definitely see that scar moves around a lot more on the surface. Wow, look at that. That's amazing. I, I haven't been able to get my hands over like that. That's incredible. I can't believe it. Oh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's not staged, I promise. We just came back from seeing you demonstrate manual lymph drainage on Gail Bruce and on her hand and arm with the hand therapists. Normally, you treat a whole body and correct. not just a hand. That is correct. Can you talk about what you did ahead of time? in advance of what we saw. Absolutely. So in order to stimulate the full lymphatic slash immune system, it's important that we stimulate all of the lymph nodes in the body. So what we did with Gail the day prior is I worked on her entire body, which means stimulating what I call, this is the main drain. It's like clearing the pipes, it's like plumbing. So we clear the pipes, we, I worked in between her ribs and worked on her chest wall, worked on her underarm so that the lymph nodes in her underarm could pick up fluid once we got to her arm on site, worked her whole body, just made sure that the rest of the system was efficient and ready to take up the load of what we were going to release in her arm. What is the difference between what you do and massage? Lymphatic drainage is a incredibly specific manual circular pumping technique that mocks how the lymphatic system and how the segments of the lymphatic vessels operate on their own. So what we do as manual lymph drainage therapists is we stimulate that system to speed up how it already functions. So it is a very specific pressure, it's a very specific technique. It doesn't require friction. You can actually damage the lymphatics. So it's really important that one is seeing a properly trained therapist. The difference with massage is it's friction. It's a fluid movement and it isn't the motion of how the lymphatics operate on their own. Massage is great for circulation 
in general, but it isn't the specific manual pumping motion that is going to get a triggered response from the lymphatic system. Hmm. So if everything's working correctly, then the lymph system is working correctly and it is draining what it needs to drain. What goes wrong and causes that to stop happening? Can have cancer treatment, which is necessary for cancer care, but chemo affects tissue, radiation, if that's part of one's treatment plan, radiation dries out tissue. The analogy I use is like jerky, so we end up with scar tissue. Um, also trauma, surgery, injuries, you know, anything that creates scar tissue, it makes a difference and restriction of the fluid flow. Okay, and manual lymph drainage, which is the treatment that you do, what conditions specific to the Silver Age could benefit from this treatment? I would say anything surgical in origin, hip replacements, knee replacements, any time there is a surgical incision, it's a good idea to have follow-up post-op care. It sounds like swelling, whether it's from venous stasis or from an injury or surgery, those are all conditions that could benefit from a manual lymph drainage treatment. Absolutely, yes. If somebody is interested in getting manual lymph drainage and they're looking for a practitioner, mm -hmm. how do they go about finding someone? I tend to recommend that folks look at the National Lymphedema Network. And they are a directory of physical and occupational therapists that are trained in lymphatic care. If one is looking to have drainage but doesn't necessarily have lymphedema, then that therapist can perhaps be a resource in the community or knows of someone in the community who that operates outside of the lymphedema box. Got it. Is there anything somebody can do to keep their lymph system or lymph vessels healthy? Exercise and or compression. Meaning? Compression socks when you fly, always. I think it's a good idea. One doesn't have to have lymphedema to wear compression. You don't have to have varicose veins to wear compression. It's a good idea to just support capillaries and the lymphatic system as a general whole so that you don't are not prone to swelling. By wearing compression, especially with changes in pressure when one flies, you keep things moving and one will not be prone to swelling. So swelling is what can damage the lymphatic vessels. That's right. If you can prevent swelling, you're doing yourself a service. That's right. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us. It has been quite eye-opening and insightful. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on this episode of Hip Silver's Health and Wellness Series. We look forward to seeing you again in the future.